fifth grade lesson 2.6 is divide by two digit divisors. And now that we've given from the previous lessons some tools for the toolbox in our brain to be loaded up with to help us with this concept and with this use of the algorithm, uh, we're going to go ahead and put those into play and use it within the algorithm itself. The essential question, how can you divide by two digit divisors? Let's unlock the problem. Mr. Yates owns a smoothie shop. To mix a batch of his famous orange smoothies, he uses 18 ounces of freshly squeezed orange juice. I'm gonna highlight that. Each day, he squeezes 560 ounces of fresh orange juice. I'm gonna highlight that. How many batches of orange smoothie can Mr. Yates make in a day? I'll underline that. You can circle the highlighted parts and then underline the question. Uh, underline the sentence that tells you what you're trying to find. How many batches of orange smoothies can Mr. Yates make in one day? Circle the numbers that you need to use. I highlighted, but you can circle. Uh, we know that he makes 560 ounces each day. And he does in each batch 18 ounces for uh, his freshly squeezed orange juice. So we're taking this 560 ounces of orange juice and splitting it into um, 18 ounces for each uh, batch. So 560 split into 18 equal pieces is division. We can estimate this is around 20. Uh, we'll call this then around 20, uh, yeah, around 200, uh, no, sorry, 600. Because 20 go, 2 goes into 6 three times. So we would get 30-ish. If I need to explain that better, I will explain that better because maybe I confused you. I rounded this to 20, and then I looked at this number, and I can count by 20. My multiple is 20 or 20, 40, 60. So I said, let me make that a 60 with a 0 on the end, just like we did in the previous lesson. 2 times 3 is what gets me to 6. I already have this 0, so I just needed one more 0, same as the previous lesson. So our estimate, our answer should be somewhere around 30-ish. If we end up with a quotient about 30, we're in good shape. Use the estimate to place the first digit in the quotient. I'm thinking that 18 times 3 might get me there, but it might not. At least I have some direction and I can adjust. I'm not just guessing and throwing things out there and multiplying them. So before I even place that first digit, I'm going to go ahead myself and do, because we know 18 times what number gets me to 5? Nothing. How about 18 times what number gets me to 56? We think it's going to be 3, or if it's not, it's very close to that. So just off to the side in my little math lab over here, 8 times 3 is 24. 3 times 1 is 3, 4, 5. Yes, that definitely does fit. So I'm going to place that at the end of the 56 there. 18 went into 56 three times. That gave me 54. 2 left over out of 0. Oh, and that's what they have here. Okay. Then we bring down. Oh, and we did this part, this step we did over here. 18 times 3 equals 54. And then we subtract 56 minus 54 right here. We were kind of working ahead of ourselves a little bit. That gave us a 2 remainder. And then we bring down that 0 for the 20. And 18 times 1 is going to get me to uh, as close to 20 as possible. That's 18 with 2 left over remainder 2. So divide um, 20 divided by 18. That's what we did here, 20 divided by 18. Multiply 18 times 1. This is the step-by-step. Step. You know these steps already pretty well. 18 times 1 gave me 18, and then I subtracted 20 minus 18, and I got a remainder of 2, remainder 2. They say, check it. Let's do 18 times 31. 18 times 31 to make sure it ends up close to 560. There's 8, there's 1. Crossy, crossy. 3 times 8, 24. 3 times 1 is 3, 4, 5. And that's 558, remember my two remainders? So that was 558, and then add the two remainders, and da 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 I get to 560, exactly. So it checks out very good. And remember we said our answer, based on our estimate, was going to be 30-ish, and it was 31 and a tiny bit more. 
So there was that. All right, let's look at this next example. Every Wednesday, Mr. Yates orders fruit. He has set aside $1,250 to purchase Valencia oranges. Let me just highlight that. That's how much money he uses to purchase the oranges. Each box of Valencia oranges costs $41. So for every one box, it's $41. How many boxes of Valencia oranges can Mr. Yates purchase? So he has that much money. Every one box is $41, so I'd pull 41 out of there for one box, then I'd pull 41 out again for another box, and then I would take 41 out of there again for another box repeatedly over and over and over again. And repeated subtraction, as you know, is also uh, division. So we're going to do a division problem, the $1,250 that, that he spends on it, divided into 41 pieces or $41 per box. They want us to do our estimate first, so let's do the estimate. Again, the estimating is something that eventually you kind of do in your head, but I'm gonna do it visually here because uh, some of you are probably still needing to see it. A lot of you, most of you are probably still needing to see it and you're not quite ready to do it without the uh, visual yet. But eventually the whole point of estimating is I wanna know about what my answer should be and I wanna do it so easily that I can just kind of calculate it through in my brain. And so to get my estimate, I would round this to 40. And so I'm looking at this four here and I'm thinking of all my multiples of four and I'm gonna look at here and 12 is a multiple of four. So I'm just gonna go ahead and round this whole thing to 12 with two zeros, 1,200 instead of 1,250. Because now I can just do four times what number gives me 12, four times three does that. This zero matches that zero and I just end up with one more zero left. So I should get uh, an answer that is around 30-ish is what I should get. All right, let's see what happens here. Uh, 41 times what number gives me one? Nothing, so keep going. 41 times what number gives me 12? Nothing, so keep going. 41 times what number gets 125? Well, if we rounded, remember we did, uh, we said, well, 40 into 120 or 12 is three with a zero on the end. So we're gonna put the three here and now we're gonna go ahead and multiply what actually is 41 times three because now we need the actual number to go here. So I'll go over my math lab off to the side over here. Three times one is three and three times four is 12. So that goes 123. So you estimate it first and you uh, and you use that information to kind of get close to or figure out what that first number is. And then you have to actually find the actual amount. So there we did, 125 minus 123 is gonna be two remainder. Bring down the zero. 41 goes into 20, how many times? Zero times. And so I end up with a 20 remainder. And we said the answer was gonna be 30-ish, and look, it certainly was. Can we check it? Let's check it. 30 times 41 gives us, uh, they did the, the multiplication for us. They just want us to add it together. Okay, thank you. That was nice. We have 1,230, but remember we had that remainder of 20. So let's just add that on there and we will get 1,250. Dun, 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 dun. Very good. So he can buy 1,000. I'm sorry, no, he can't buy 1250 That's how much money he has. He can buy 30 boxes, and he'll have some money left over. 30 boxes of Valencia oranges. Okay, let's try this one. We have 756 divided by 63. And I'm just going to go ahead and start, because I already see right away what number will go here. I'll lead you to it. But I really don't need to kind of round that or estimate it, because I can see right away. 63 times what number gets me close to seven? Nothing. But 63 times what number gets me close to 75? I can only count by 63 once. If I go by 63 again, I'm way over 100. So I just want the one here. And I'll find out what's left as my remainder. Five minus three is two, and seven minus six is one. Always check and make sure remainder is smaller than divisor. If it isn't, then we could have gone more, but we knew we couldn't there, okay. Now, 63 times what number gets me close to 126? So I'm looking at this six, like 60, and this 12, like 120, and I'm thinking maybe times two. So I'm gonna experiment with 63 times two to see 
where that puts me, the estimating or the rounding off these numbers in your head help you pinpoint about how much so that you can you know what to experiment with. So two times three is six, and two times six is 12. Ooh, looky there, winna winna, chicken dinner is 63 times two gives me exactly 126 with none left over. So 63 times 12 is 756. Let's try another one. Feel free to try this one, pause it and, and try it yourself unless you feel like you need my help. Uh, this is 22 and it's dividing into 4,692 or 4,692 divided by 22. Um, I know that 22 times nothing is gonna give me four, but 22 times something can give me 46. And if I just round this out 20, that's two here, and 40, that's two here, of two here, then I would, uh, I think 22 times two should get me there. And I'll experiment with that. 22 times two, I might not have explained that well. Let me Let me explain that better just in case. In my brain, this is what's happening. I said, well, if that's 20, then I've got this two is my multiples I'm going after and there's the four. So I'm gonna round it to that and 20 goes into 40 twice. That's what my brain was kind of doing in its head. Um, and now I'm gonna experiment now, that was if it was 20, but now I'm experimenting with 22 times two to see what it actually is. I'm pretty sure that's gonna be two up there though. 2 times 2 is 4, and 2 times 2 is 4. It ends up being 44, and yes, that fits. So 44 here. The 2 goes up here because I was dividing into the 46. Subtract for my remainder. 6 minus 4 is 2. Okay, how many 22s are fitting into 29 without going over? Just 1. If I go more than that, I'm way over. I'm at 44. And so 22 goes here. 22 times 1 is 22. 9 minus 2 is 7. Yes, that is smaller than my divisor. Bring down the 2. Okay, 22 times what number gets me 72? Again, I can use my uh, rounding skills. This does happen in my brain. 2 times thinking of my multiples of 2, 2, 4, 6. 60 is as close as I can get without going over. So that's 2 times 3. That gives me 60. Maybe... 22 times 3 is just right, or maybe it's 22 times 4. I'm not sure, but at least I've used my rounding to narrow it down to either the 3 or the 4. So let's experiment with the 3. 22 times 3. 2 times 3 is 6. 2 times 3 is 6. And I get 66. And just to be sure, I'm going to do 22 times 4. 4 times 2 is 8. 4 times 2 is 8. Oh, no, that's too big. It's this one. 3 goes here. I get 66, and 12 minus 6 is 6, 6 minus 6 is 0, so my remainder is 6. So those tools from the previous lesson where you were rounding those out, this is where they come into play. They help you kind of narrow down uh, what number you're going to divide. You get it close so you're not just guessing in the air like, I'm just going to try a 5, now I'm going to try a 9, now I'm going to try a 3. You don't have to guess all over the place, you can target it in. That's what the estimating from the previous lesson helped us with. Okay, we're on the Sharon Show. As soon as you're feeling comfortable to try the pause and play a scenario to check your answers, go ahead and start doing that. And once you've done that a few times and you're getting them correct and feeling confident about it, then you can go ahead and go to Think Central and finish your assignment there. Um, but I will do these six Sharon Show problems for any of you who need that extra practice through so that your brain can digest it. So I'm starting with 620 divided by 28. Okay, 28 times nothing gives me 6. So I'm moving on to 28 times 62. And I'm using that rounding skill. Again, this is not something generally that I write down. I kind of do this in my brain. I've got that zero there, right? I'm going to round that to 30. So thinking of my multiples of 3, 3, 6, 60, is um, is what I would look at there instead of 62. 3 times 2 is 60. So I know this is probably, most likely, going to be a 2, 28 times 2, but I am going to check that to make sure anyways I need to know what that's going to be exactly anyway. 2 times 8 is 16. 2 times 2 is 4 plus 1 is 5. Okay, so I put a 2 here. Make sure it goes above the 2 from 62. 
because we were dividing into the 62 because there was the zero here already, right? In fact, put those zeros there if you need to so you don't get out of place. Okay, and because we did this calculation here, we now know that is 56. So we subtract to get our remainder there, and 12 minus 6 is 6. Bring down, that 6 clearly is less than our divisor, that's good. Bring down, and 28 times what is 60? Well, 28 times 2 is 56, and I'm certainly not going to fit another 28 in there. So we get to use that one we've already done. That's nice when that happens. 56, subtract, I cannot do 0 and subtract 6 from it, so I do need to borrow 10 minus 6 is 4. So 22, remainder 4. All right, again, if you feel like you're ready to pause and try it and then play, go ahead and to check it, go ahead and do that. I have 842 divided by 64. Uh, 64 times 0 gives me 8. I'm not, I can't fit 64 into 8 in a way, right? 64 times what number gets me 84? Well, 64, 60 if I double is 120, and that's way over 80, whatever. So on this one, I know that it's going to be a 1. Sometimes you can just see it. So I will subtract because 64 times 1 is, is uh, 64. 4 minus 4 is 0. 8 minus 6 is 2. And bring down the 2. Okay. 64 uh, times what number? It gets me as close as possible to 202. Well, here's where I'm going to use my rounding skills. In my brain, I do this again, but I'm going to round that to 60, and I'm looking for 202. Thinking of my 6s and my multiples of 6, I have 6, 12, 18. So if I said, hmm, this is 18, 180 maybe, um, that would be 6 times 3. So it's either going to be a 3 here or maybe a 4. I'm not sure. So I'm going to experiment with a 3 first. I've just targeted in. Instead of saying, I'm going to guess a 9, whatever, I was able to target in by rounding in my head usually. So I'm going to experiment with 3. 3 times 4 is 12. And 3 times 6 is 18 plus 1 is 19. That's 192. That's very close to 202, only about 10 away. In fact, it's exactly 10 away. Um, I can't fit another 64 on that. So I'm sure that that's a 3 now. Subtract 192, that is a 0. Borrow there, and that is a 10. So I have a remainder 10. All right, and at this stage, you probably have an idea of where you stand on things, how well you're understanding it. You might need a few more practice ones before you have to do it by yourself. And if that's the case, I am here for you. I will go through a couple more with you. If you are feeling like, I'm done with you, Ms. Sanchez, I totally get this, then you are free to go onto Think Central and work on that on your own. Okay, 2,340 divided by 53. So I'm going to ask myself, 53 times what number gives me 2? Nothing. And just out of habit, I'm going to put the 0 there because it's a placeholder and it keeps me lined up nice and neat. 53 times what number gives me 23? Um, also nothing. Okay, so now I've been pushed over all the way to 53 times what number gets me 234. Here's where I'm going to go ahead and round some things. I do it in my head like I said normally, but for the purposes of helping you get the hang of it, I'm going to do this right now. I'm really only looking at the 234 right now because I want to know what number goes here. That's what I'm focusing on. I'd round this to 50 in my head. And now I'm counting by fives, five, and looking at these two numbers. So 5, 10, 15, 20, um, and then 25 would be after. So it's going to be either this uh, number here or one above it. So 5 times 4 gives me 20. So 50 times 4 gives me 200. Um, so the number that should go here is going to be around a 4. It could be a 5. And I'm not entirely sure. I'm pretty sure it's going to be a 4, but I'm going to experiment over here with the 4 because I need to know the exact amount anyway. 4 times 3 is 12. 4 times 5 is 20 plus 1 is 21. And if I did that times 5, in fact, I can do it times 5 just to make sure. 5 times 3 is 15. 5 times 5 is 25 plus 1 is 26. And that's too much. So I'm going to use the 4. Now I know. And that's 212. I already have it calculated here. And I never erase them because you never know when I need to use it again. 4 minus 2 is 2. 
3 minus 1 is 2, bring down the 0. And here's what I mean. You never know when you might need it again. I already have the 4 calculated and the 5 calculated. The 5 is too high and the 4 fits. So I didn't erase them for the reason of now I, I have the help for that. So I don't even have to guess or round anything. I know that it's going to be the 4. That gives me 212. Now I need to subtract for a remainder. I can't do 0 minus 2. I need to borrow, borrow. 10 minus 2 is 8. A 1 minus 1 is nothing and nothing. So I have a remainder of 8 on that. 44, remainder 8. Okay, I am going to be doing three more. But again, if you totally get this and you feel like you can do this without any help from anybody, uh, go ahead and go on Think Central and do that. If you feel like you just need me to go through a few more with you as you digest or you want to try a few with a pause and play sort of a thing just to make sure I've got three more to do with you. I have 723 divided by 31. 723 divided by 31. 31 times what number gives me seven? Uh, nothing, there's no way. 31 times what number gets me 72? Well, if this is 30, I would count by 30, then 60, then 90. 90 is too high, I need, uh, I need it under 72. So it's gonna be 31 times two, and I need that exact amount, so I'm gonna do the calculation off to the side, because I know that's gonna be two. 2 times 1 is 2, and 2 times 3 is 6. 62, 0 there, and 1 there. Yes, my remaining amount currently is less than my divisor. Now I'll bring down the 1's place, the 3. 31 times what number gets me close to 103? Again, if I rounded it to 30, and I count by 30, I have 30, 60, 90, and then it would be 120 which would be too high. So I think 31 times three is gonna be the answer I want. Now I need to calculate that. Three times one is three, and three times three is nine. That gives me 93. Three minus three is zero, 10 minus nine is one. So I have a remainder of 10. 23 remainder 10. We'll do the next one. This is 1,359 divided by 45. 45 times what number gets me to one? Um, nothing, zero. Let's move over even another place value. 45 times what number gets me to 13? Um, nothing, 45 does nothing can get me under 13. 45 times what number gets me to 135 in my brain? I'm thinking, okay, let me just look at the 135 part of it. And I'm going to round this to 50. It's right in between, so that's going to make it tricky. And I'm thinking of my multiples of 5, 5, 10, 15. I'm going to go with 150 here. So this would be 3. So 45 times 3 is my guess for 135. It might be 4. Though, at least I know I have kind of a, an idea, a close idea. So I'll experiment with 45 times 3 first. And that's going to be 15 and then 12, 13. Oh, it's exactly that. Oh, win a win a chicken dinner. Okay, okay, okay. Zero. Bring down the 9. Uh, 45 times what number can get me 9 or less? Nothing. So that gets a 0. And I have a remainder of 9. The final one that we'll practice is 7,925 divided by 72. 72 times what number gets me as close to seven as possible without going over? Uh, nothing, there's nothing. 72 times zero can do that. 72 times what number gets me as close to 79 as possible without going over? Ooh, that was a nice one. 72 times one, right? 72 times one gives me 72. Okay, nine minus two is seven, seven minus seven is zero. Obviously, this is smaller than the divisor, so I'm in very good shape. Bring down the next number. Oh, they did this nicely nice again. 72 divided by 72, or actually 72 times what number gets me as close to 72 as possible? Ooh, 72 times one does that, of course. Of course, of course. Oh, they're making this way easy. Bring down the five. 72 times what number? I'm not done yet, right? 72 times what number gets me as close to 5? Uh, 0. There's no way I can do it. So that's a 0. 72 times 0 is 0. 
Five is my remainder, remainder five. 110, remainder five. I hope I've been able to help you understand this. I'm here if you need me, so just let me know. But you probably are ready, I think, to go on Think Central. I hope, I hope you're ready to go on Think Central and do it on your own. That means I've done a pretty good job. All right, good luck.